Let's go south. Yeah, it is like in the 20s, so we're gonna bug out. But you might think we're going in that. Nope. We're going in that. Oh, what the <laughs> heck are we doing? Hey, Daisy, are you spazzing out? Is it because it's go time? We're not leaving yet. We know we never leave yet. It's travel day. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. I'm Daisy. It's two weeks before Christmas, but I don't know if we're coming back between now and then. There's Crazy Dog. We're taking the little one, not the 410, because our road is still not fixed. It's in progress. But I'm excited. I'm excited to try out this, this reflection, 28RL. It should be fun. All right, let me run through my checklist. I think we're ready to roll. Did you lock up the 410? I did. Did you kiss my face? Not yet. It's my face. <laughs> I might as well get in the warm truck while you do that. It's true. Because it's for It's for this, this is going, by the way. Hi, guys. Okay, GPS. You don't get good. You, know, you don't get a treat until you calm down. Okay? okay? It's time. It's time. <laughs> Strap you in. Oh, it's in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not putting a bit on you, oh, horse. Well, little horse dog. Oh baby, I know you don't like it. I know. Are you ready to do this thing? Yeah. Uh, I guess I gotta get out again. Yeah. I gotta film and stuff. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Behind the scenes. again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. Something, something, drinking beer with my friends. Sort of. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Why are we towing a reflection? We're going to wait until we get to our destination and get set up and then we'll fill you in on, on the what the heck are we doing with this reflection instead of the 410. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're just going to share a little bit of our drive to Charleston, South Carolina, because we need to head somewhere that's a little bit warmer and we just needed a little break. How does it feel for you? It feels like I'm driving the truck with nothing behind us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people say all the time, oh, I towed, you know, 20 million pounds and it's like it's not even there. Well, this is like, I think 8,000 pounds. This truck's rated for like 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's super, super light. It's gonna be exciting to try something new. This this yeah. RV has all new systems for me to play with and learn. I'm kind of nerd new. <laughs> and I'm just excited to be out on the road again for a little bit. got the compass connect app here which has the leveler system in it yeah and it looks like we are tipped this way a lot not much i think we can just pull the slide out and let's be fine. just see how it is because you know a little bit will probably be okay but significant yeah. makes me get have vertigo it's not like way off see how you feel inside okay look at me look at you no, I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, look at me. Oh, uh, look at me. <laughs> look at me. I, I don't know which, I forget which side is which. I'm going to guess and say that the button on this side is for this slide. Nope, I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so it's the opposite. It's a lot louder than our hydraulics. A couple things that we just thought about 
I can't use the microwave to heat up this beef stew that I made for travel day. Yeah, we're so used to just having power all the time. So I'm gonna have to put it on, on here and use the stove and that'll be okay. And then also we're so used to it just being toasty, warm or nice and cool, depending on the time of year, oh, yeah. when we get to our destination and it's really cold in here because it's- 59. It's, it's 59 inside, so that's cold. Something else that I didn't think about is that Daisy's food bowls and water bowls are in the cabinet in there. Uh, okay, well, we'll put so that she's probably not gonna eat anyhow. So I have food in the truck. I'll just give her some if she wants it and stuff. This road will knock the wind out of you. It's so bumpy, rough. Yeah, and it was down to narrow, narrow two lanes and the semis were passing and like super, super tight. I swear if we were like inches from that last one that passed us. Yeah, not a fan of 26. It's 26 East. Keep left to I-5 26 East, then keep right. We love this town and we haven't been ever during the holidays and it's somebody's birthday tomorrow. And he said Charleston, so here we are. There you have it, folks. And, and we're going to the Mount Pleasant Charleston KOA, a place we've never stayed at before. Our friends have high praises for the park, so we'll see. We do have several previous Charleston videos. If you're interested, we've been here when it's warmer and taking the bike out too and taking some rides, so that's always cool. In one mile, turn right on KOA Campground Road. You can silence the noise when I hear your voice and you say you're coming home again. When we're together, the band is playing. When we're together, the world is singing our song. When we're together, the sun is shining. Chad wants me to stop looking at the sunset and help him with stuff. It's rude. You know, comment on how these are different. I can't just put the jacks down willy nilly. Yeah. Because this looks a little bit high. Yeah. I'm leaving these a good. I might do one more notch up. Okay. Give it a good five, six inches off. I'm coming around. One more shot of that beautiful sunset before it's gone. You have to hold the button down the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. It's got an auto level. I mean, this is kind of how we do it in hours. Yeah. You gotta hold the button down to get, get it off. Oh, that's, edge. yeah, that's true. No. Hi. Hi. Oh, you seem nice. And there's our site. I have been way too interested in that sunset over the water than I have been. <laughs> All right, gonna push the auto level button. Okay. It says remain still. <laughs> Why don't you put a ja jacket on? I'm okay. I can tell you're cold. I'm all right. <laughs> I mean, like he could, he could end his, his suffering by just putting a jacket on, but no, he won't do it. So we've been using the watchdog surge protector slash total protection. I forget what watchdog calls theirs. But we reached out to our friends, Eric and Tammy at Techno RV because we wanted to try their competitor. Honestly, I think both of them are probably about the same. So we've got a surge guard here. But we used the surge guard internal device in our 397. Yes, so yeah. we've used SurgeGuard before, we've just never used this external one. This new one has Bluetooth, 
Nice. Well, I'm just going to plug it in right now, but later on we'll hook up the Bluetooth and see what we see. Yeah, because we you need know, to take that dog. That. We need to take Daisy for a walk yeah. before it we'll gets started. We'll be able to compare that to the uh, watchdog and see what the differences are. If it does like metering and stuff like that. Okay. That's it. You just lean it against the pole. <laughs> I mean, our neighbor is very curious about what you're doing. Yeah. Let's see what it does. So it's on a, a delay. There we go. So we got good voltage, line two, 120, frequency 60. That's, that's perfect. Okay, good. Let's go walk that dog. All right. We got a lot of space in here. And a Christmas tree. See? Chad wanted hamburgers because tomorrow's his birthday. So I said, okay, twist my arm. It's Chad's birthday. Good morning. You get a donut. But I feel okay about giving you this donut because it's the mother of macros donut. Supposed to sing to me or something? Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. That is delicious and healthy, all in the same donut. Well, healthier than a regular donut, right? I mean, it's still got sugar, right? Well, it's got healthy. Healthy sugar? It's low glycemic. So what the heck are we doing in this reflection? <laughs> this is the 28RL. It is their 100 series, which is their entry level fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. We are in it because, well, you've probably seen that we got our large 410 stuck going up our gravel road at the cabin. Yeah, big nightmare. So if you haven't seen that video, go watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're still working on getting our road situation fixed, but we've also been talking with Grand Design, our friends over there, wouldn't it be fun for us to try out some of their other models? Mm -hmm. And we all thought this is a great time for us to do that. We have no problem taking this much lighter weight, smaller fifth wheel up and down our road. Mm -hmm. And so the timing was just perfect and we've been itching to get out anyhow. So it's been great. Yeah, and it's kind of neat just trying something smaller. It doesn't have a garage. It's really well appointed. It's I, We've been really impressed with it. We're going to have a tour coming up, and it's going to be a different kind of tour because we got to stay in it for a few weeks. We're going to share with you our likes and dislikes mm -hmm. from a living in it perspective, and I think that that is a much truer sense of what it's going to be like to live in it or to travel in it. Mm -hmm. And so far, we've really, really had a good time in it. We've gotten questions over the years. You must get paid by Grand Design to say all these nice things. We don't. We're not on Grand Design payroll. They don't pay us to say nice things. They never tell us what we can and cannot say about their product. We've always shared the good, the bad, and the ugly with mm -hmm. you in regards to our momentum. There's been plenty of ugly. If you and look at our video yeah. lineup, yeah. everything that happens in our RVs, we share with you. Yes. It's benefits like this is how this partnership benefits us, right? So they're letting us try out this reflection for a couple of weeks. We give it back. I don't know what we do with another I, RV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first time using the Lippert Ground Control 3.0. So this one is electronic or electric versus hydraulic. I've been kind of winging it. And luckily it's got the uh, dropping off trailer, parking brake, tires, press on off, press G to turn panel on, extend the inner legs of both landing gear to within four to five inches of the ground. Now this side might be. Might be different. Yeah, I'm just gonna get it to about the same. Four to five inches. That's probably more like six. I'm gonna move this one down just a touch. Okay. This is different. <laughs> Push front button, lower landing gear until it's off the wheel plate. So this. Gotta hold the front down. We're gonna get it just off the hitch, just like we do when we do ours. Okay. So you're saying it's not just to push one button and walk away? <laughs> no. I think it does do auto level though. We'll find out. And we're just off the weight. Okay. This feels a little tighter. I feel yeah. like we've got twice this room. Yeah, I was, I was looking at that. Yeah. You gotta be a little more lined up. Yes. Yo, wherever I'm going, all I'll ever know. Yo, wherever I'm going, I'm low. 
push auto level. Okay, so. If we put those down too far and it can't get down far enough to get level, we're gonna have to get back on the hitch. Yeah. That's gonna be a pain. <laughs> yeah. I hope it doesn't. Uh oh, bottom out. Oh wait. Are we good? I think we barely made it <laughs> on that maybe. I'm assuming with something like this, it's one of those those things that you get used to, like you kind of know yeah. how to ju how to judge it. Uh huh. You know, you maybe mess up a couple times in the beginning and then you're like, okay, now I understand how far up I need to have them. Yeah, definitely when you're in a situation where it's gonna have to go nose low, you wanna give it more room. Like you said, you'll get used to that. Yeah. I know the way the jacks work on the hydraulic one is it likes to go nose low just a touch and then come up. That way there's positive pressure on the hydraulics. On the electric, I'm not sure it matters, but it probably does something similar. It does operate them independently, which is cool. We should have got some snap heads. Yeah, it's going back up. Our level success. Oh, yeah. First time, baby. Ready. Boop. High five. Good job. First we'll see time it. looking inside. He told me he hasn't gone in, so we'll see. I cracked the door and looked at the control panel. That was it. Okay. I haven't taken the slides out. The only thing I've seen of this is what we saw online. No, no, uh, no hydraulic assist, but that's it's not too heavy. You're my hydraulic assist. I, uh, I'm all gas powered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Admitted it on camera and everything. Slide one, slide two, and an awning are on here. Okay. Where's Where are the lights? Lights, lights on, under here? Ceiling this? lights on. Oh. So I wonder. That's what I'm saying. What if the battery disconnect is. Uh... I don't know, but I'm going to take a sneak peeky in here. A little kitchen. We got seating areas. This is what it looks like with the slides in. I heard it. Go beep. Ah, we have lights. Lights. So it's got a little bit of a battery indicator here. So uh, ceiling lights. There we go. Yay! What's that? What is this? Error code. What does it say there? It says water heater. Okay. Pretty deep slide. It sounds like it's electric. You know what? And I saw no hydraulic pump in the front. Oh. Okay, hey, that's. Oh, yeah. oh, that that usually, didn't sound real good. Usually those kind of slides you hold until they're out. I don't know. Our battery went from charge to good doing that. It looks cozy in here. It's a really nice size island. Yeah, it is. Look at this. It's nice. It's real cute. It's weird seeing the ceiling sloped. See the ceiling slopes down? Yeah, I like it. It feels, it feels nice and big in here though. Yeah, it's very spacious. Packing up to go on this camping trip with the reflection. And we asked a bunch of people on our social media for tips on what they pack, you know, for week long camping trips and stuff like that, or for our weekend campers. And, you know, most people said that they have the campers just basically already stocked full except for food and perishables, which makes a lot of sense because if you had to go through this packing it up each time, like like we're doing right now, that would be a pain in the butt. But since we're just going on a short trip, it's, it's totally fine and worth it, but I'm going to need to move some of the stuff from the 410 over to the reflection so that we have everything that we need. I want to use the reflection the way that we would use it if we were traveling more frequently or full-time. I want to be able to make sure I have all the stuff to cook and clean and everything that we might need. So that's why I'm doing all this. You know what I need to do is that stove in there, that oven is smaller. And I don't know if the pans that I have in here are going to fit. Probably not. At least not the cookie sheets. Moment of truth. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, I think I got rid of, I think I got rid of my smaller cookie sheets. The 397 had a smaller size oven and I needed the smaller sheets, but with the 410 I got regular size. I probably won't be making cookies, 
since the reflection is a queen bed, we're going to take our good Mattress Insider mattress. Got to be an insider to get one. Well, <laughs> you Mattress don't. Insider. You don't, but we've got a code just in case. You guys, he's going to totally try to carry this mattress over by himself. Watch. I told you guys he's going to be bringing it by himself. <laughs> It's a short trip, but we gotta be comfy. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we gotta figure out the TV situation. I'm telling you, a projector is gonna be right there. <laughs> hey, you wanna go see the new RV? You wanna go to the RV? Okay. It kind of smells like home, huh? Smells familiar, but yeah, different. What's going on? And if you wanna go see yourself, should I take your ride? I'm just gonna be a seat was. While I was busy getting the inside of the reflection comfortable and ready for us to travel in, Chad got busy doing the outside stuff like checking and inflating the tires. By the way, I got one of these online that kind of, uh, I got it for the motorcycle really, and I think it'd be fine for that. But I tried to use it on the truck and it got that tire up to 90. I tried to do the other front tire. And I don't know if you can see. It's uh, it's smoking and it's hot. That's not good. So got to get another one of these for the bike. I'm not going to use it on the truck anymore. So I found this Grand Design Compass Connect. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do get and download that thing. App is downloaded. Go ahead and open it. Oh, looks like the water's full. Let me go turn the water off. Did you notice how when I walked in, this lit up? So it doesn't stay lit up when there's nobody in front of it. It must have some motion sensing. So it's not the LCI One Control app, but it does still use my LCI login. It's like we can control the awning, the leveling system, our lights water pump and slides. Yeah, it's all there. That's pretty cool. I like it. Swapping out because we've got our sensors on here. This bay here for the uh, propane on this system fits a 30 pound tank nicely. It definitely will not fit a 40. The top is right here. And that's fine. You know, we, we ran with 30s forever. Of course, it's raining for like two days straight as we get ready <laughs> prepping this RV for travel. But one thing I have to do that I've only done once in, an, uh, in our other RVs, and that is sanitize, AKA dewinterize. So I am going to give this manual a shot and just follow the manual. Hope it doesn't lead me astray. Because we're, we're gonna need our tanks and everything, obviously. In water and showers, you know, we don't wanna go two weeks for that shower. It looks pretty straightforward. I just need some bleach water and such and fill it in. I think I've got the hose and stuff that I need in the other RV, so let's go. Quarter cup per gallon. So I'm gonna do about four gallons and I poured about a cup in there. It wasn't exact, but you know, it doesn't have to be precise, I don't think. It's not a chemical reaction or anything. Like ours, this one's pretty well labeled. So I want the siphon sanitize. So down, left, right. It's supposed to not be raining right now. I've only got a few hour window where it's not raining and it's raining. And the freshwater drain, of course, is way under here. Yeah, I didn't figure there'd be much in there. Go RVing, I said. It'll be fun. Connect to the hose. Turn on the water pump. Sounds like it's working. Yeah, looks like my water's going down. So basically what we're doing on this step is we're just filling the freshwater tank with bleach water 
And then we're gonna take that bleach water, run it through all the faucets, and then we're gonna flush everything and dump everything out, I think. Temporarily outfit this with some of our fittings. Now that the fresh water tank is filled with bleach water, now I gotta put the system into dry camp mode and then pump that water up and through all of the faucets. The manual doesn't really say much about that, so we want dry camping down up that way. The manual isn't real explicit about that, but how else are you going to turn on the faucets and let all the air out and let the bleach water in unless you've got it in dry camping mode? All right, the faucets are already open, so I'm just gonna turn on the pump and we should start getting water pumping. Oh no, this was an open hit through here. You can see the uh, antifreeze getting purged. I remember when we sanitized our 397 that basically it said to run the water until you smell bleach. So that makes more sense. Purging out what's in there, getting the bleach water into the system. Oh yeah, that's bleachy. I'm gonna let it run a little bit longer just to kind of wash all of the uh, antifreeze down. Get all the air out. Gonna pump it into the water heater as well. Now we will do the bathroom. Oh yeah, that's bleachy. Okay, so now the shower, the sink here, the sink out there, all have bleach water in the lines. The manual says let them sit for three hours. Let that sit and sanitize and then we will purge it. So it's been about two and a half hours that I let the bleach sit in there, uh, sit in the tank. I just came out a couple minutes ago and pulled the freshwater dump valve. The manual basically just says to flush the system with fresh water. It even has some instructions on if you still have any bleach smells to use vinegar. I'm just gonna go with the first step and I'm gonna flush the system. The way I'm gonna do that is by flushing the fresh tank first. I've got the dump valve open. Now I'm going to use the hose and power fill. Nope, oh, turn the pump off. And you can hear, as soon as I put that power fill on, it's uh, dumping out the bottom over here. So I'm going to just kind of let that flush out a little bit. Because once I get the water in there, fresh and free of bleach, then I can just turn on all the faucets and the pump and then run all the fresh water through the system, flush it out. All of the dewinterization is complete. All of the gray and black tanks are empty. The black tank has been treated. I've been adding some water just for travel day. We're about two thirds now. I like that these turn red when they're down below. As soon as they get to a third and below, they turn red, but they're green. I'd be curious what these actual voltages are. There's our little reflection, barely taking up half the site. It's, it's like our truck's almost as big <laughs> as the RV. I like it though. Yeah, it's got so much room inside. We spend the next week exploring some new things in Charleston that we've never done before, and we will share those with you in our next video.